We are going to look at creating neon signs today. I will walk you through modeling, materials, and rendering to create a very realistic result. Neon signs are tubes with gas in them that when you send electricity through they light up. To create these tubes, we will be using curves in Blender. It's a very easy way to create a path that is very controllable. Each part of the sign is a solid tube. What they do is they offset them and coat this part in black paint so that it won't actually show up, just the open part will. But it's all connected as one, so they just have to put two electrodes on either end and send electricity to the whole thing. The frame is pretty basic. All it is are flat planes that make up strips of metal. There's the converter unit that creates a consistent power supply for the signs and small clips that hold the sign in place. There's also the cables that connect the signs to the converter, and that's basically it. First, we will need a reference image that we will be shaping the sign to. Go to the side panel, the background images. Add an image and find your desired image. Go to the front view and center the image. Now add a curve, Bezier curve. We're gonna take the rotation out of it. Rotate it by negative 45 degrees. And then change the fill type in the properties panel to full and increase the depth. This is at the lowest resolution, so I'll bump that up a little bit to make it smoother. Now all we have to do is trace the sign. So the black parts right here, 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 and here are actually farther back than these glowing parts in the sign. So what we'll do is once we come to a glowing part, we will extrude it forwards on the z-axis a little bit to create the depth. Once you've completed modeling the neon light part of the sign, it's time to move on to the cabling and the mounting system. There's a slant in the sleeve that connects the wire to the neon sign. To create this slant, use Alt-S to scale individual vertices of the curve. Now let's duplicate this wire to the other side. Make your pivot point the 3D cursor. Make sure it's in the center. Shift D to duplicate it and immediately hit S, X to scale on the X axis, negative one and hit enter. That will position it roughly where we want it. Then we can fine tune it from here. All the mounting system is are flat pieces of metal. So I think a plane will be sufficient for this. And then 
instead of just duplicating it around, we'll hit Alt D. What this does is creates an instance of the exact same object. So if I go into edit mode and change something here, it's reflected in the other one. So all we have to do is change one and it'll, it will um, mirror across all of them. Now I'm going to create the wall with a plane. Now we are done modeling, let's move on to the material stage. Let's start with the lighting. So go to the world panel and change the background color to almost black. Not completely pitch black, but almost black. To where you can barely see the sign still. First, let's start with the neon orange sign. First element, obviously is a emission shader. Right off the bat, we have the problem of even reading the sign correctly. We have everything lighting up when in fact they dip the back half of the sign in black paint. So to create this effect, we will add a texture and a gradient node. What this does is gives, gives us a gradient from black to white. Black being the parts that are covered in paint, white being the parts that are emitting a light. So let's add a texture coordinate and a mapping node because currently the gradient is not in the correct direction. We will change the Z axis to 90 degrees and this will give us a fall off from white to black. But we need to add a converter color ramp to sharpen this effect. We will drag the black up a little bit and the white down. And you can see the effect it has, which I think around there is good. Now, what we need to do is create, create the paint shader. We will add a principal shader and mix these two with this value that we just created. And we will swap their places. And now we have the glowing lights and whatever material we choose here. This material will be very basic, just a almost black, very shiny, clear coated plastic. Kind of like glass. Now a huge factor in neon lights is the color, obviously, a neon color. To achieve that, we could just change the color here to a very vibrant orange, but you run into the problem of, on a real neon sign, the middle of the bulb is bright white, and as it gets to the edge, it becomes more saturated and dimmer. To create this effect, we will use a layer weight we will be using the facing factor, which gives us the desired effect. Now you might think that we would adjust the color, but instead we will choose our desired color and affect the strength of the emission. Let's add in a converter color ramp and a math node. Change it to multiply. Plug this into the strength. Now what we see is the middle is very dark and the edges are bright. So let's reverse this effect. We'll change this value to be one, the next value to be three, and the final value to be four. Change this value to two. So to create the white hot middle, what we need to do is bring the saturation down just a little bit until we create, until we can see that, that whiteness in the middle. All right, there is good to me. So that's the neon text. Let's duplicate all of these nodes with control C and paste them with control V into the node material for the outer ring. Let's connect it. And we do have to change some things. Change the location on the X axis until we get the, the desired effect. I think that looks good. Now all we have to do is change the color to a blue hue 
to create the neon glow. Now we're done with the base materials of the lights. You can continue to tweak these values until you're satisfied. The rest of the materials are very simple black plastics or metals. And you can create any shape with this neon sign technique. It doesn't just have to be the generic open sign. Experiment with your own shapes and designs and share your results below. Thanks for watching.